Today the first project I want to talk to you about is um, our Rural Schools Building Programme in Malawi. It was a, a prototype project um, to, that was hopefully going to lead on to kind of um, changes within the school design in Malawi. We first started engaging in this project with the um, Hunter Clinton Foundation um, through a connection with um, John and um, and Hunter himself. We started with a whole series of research into the existing school models looking at um, different types of construction. We also looked at um, daylighting within all of the existing school buildings. We also looked at the whole school holistically in terms of cost. Firstly we were keen to think about how we could create many usable spaces but with only two core classrooms. So we, we ended up splitting the two classrooms and creating a space in the middle and then a classroom at either end. And then over that we have kind of one singular roof which covers the whole space. You can see that by creating um, an overlap to the roof you have a clear space for, for high level ventilation. That roof structure managed to improve the daylight factor to 3.4% from 1.5%. It wasn't just about building the individual schools but it was about developing a design manual and something which uh, could then be used by all sorts of um, of different education uh, establishments moving forward. And then this is uh, one of the, the three schools completed and you can see here um, this is kind of the central space used as another teaching area alongside the other spaces as well. And then here you can actually see those external spaces used a lot more with as I was saying kind of the younger children actually often watching their older siblings learn and then the other teaching activities happening outside so you get a really transformative teaching space. And finally, as I was saying, we did a whole series of post-occupancy studies because it was really important for us that we didn't stop the project there and that we wanted to understand what was successful, what wasn't so successful and what we could put that learning back into to ensure that any of the working from the next prototype schools could, could learn from this. And finally, this is just a, a final graph looking at the com completion rate of primary school children um, by year. So it certainly is on an upwards trajectory. Great. Thank you very much. So hi, I'm Heather Macy, another associate at John McCasson & Partners and I'm here today to talk to you about our Hidden Homeless initiative. I think everybody knows homelessness is getting worse and worse and today we have 9,000 people sleeping rough on the streets every year. There's a whole load of people which we GLA refer to as Hidden Homeless which are not counted and that accounts to we think 400,000 people in the UK every year. It's for a host of reasons and 40% is actually loss of assured uh, short-term tenancy. We all know that homelessness is a result of, in part, the housing crisis. We know that there's you know, a housing shortage, shortage that by uh, 2020 is estimated to be by one million down. So New Horizon Youth Centre is a charity that we've worked with for a very long time. They're based in Camden. They address this issue head on. They, they deal with um, 16 to 25 year olds. They don't just provide homeless accommodation, they provide a whole service. I met with um, New Horizon Youth Centre a couple of years ago to just talk about the need today. Initially, the idea was an architectural competition to design shelter to get something built for New Horizon Youth Centre as quickly as possible. What was supposed to be this very quick six-month initiative turned into kind of two years of numerous discussions and became something much bigger than that. What we did manage to do was get TfL to loan us York Road Railway Station, which was in our minds perfect for this competition because it's a disused building that has been you know, disused for 16 years. So these are the types of projects or buildings that we should be looking at. We have 47 submissions, which is incredible, from really, really high calibre, all of them, um, architects and really, really thoughtful. Morrison Company had a stepping stone approach, which is essentially why they won. The business models that sit behind these wonderful designs are actually just as, if not more important to the whole process. This is, this is our kind of next step. So I've set up an architects working group. So I'm working with the various um, policy makers and people that we've met through the competition. And our ambition is that something will get built, not just one thing. Each of us have an ambition to build something. The most meaningful for me of the competition is this collective endeavor to you know, change the way things are being done. It's an amazing thing to um, engage in and everybody should because you really can make a difference. Both of these projects treat the other end of the spectrum. People who, as we have seen, perhaps don't even have a primary school education. So I found both of these you know, terrifically inspiring and very much similar to the values that we pursue in Article 25.